I believe this belongs to you. I want to talk to you today about returning home to your authentic self by way of recovery. And when I say recovery, some of us instantly, we might go to that place of recovering from something, recovery from some addiction or physical crisis or emotional crisis or financial crisis. But actually, the definition of recovery means to rediscover something that has been lost, to reawaken, to rediscover something that you've misplaced. So I want to talk about the recovery of that aspect of you that is spoken about in Genesis, where it states, in the beginning, God beheld everything that it had created and named it good and very good. It didn't look at the ocean and say, my, my, the waves aren't big enough. I'm going to name you unworthy. It didn't look at the sun and say, you're not shining quite brightly enough. I'm going to name you not good enough. It didn't look at the human beings as its human incarnation and say, mm, you're not perfect enough, so I'm going to name you shame. It didn't look at the infinite ways in which it expresses itself in, in multiple diversities and races and every creed, every color, every ethnicity, every group, every community, every sexual orientation. It didn't look at us and say, I'm going to name you not good enough, or I'm going to give one group superiority over another, or make one, another group be inferior to another. It said, I'm going to name you oneness. I'm going to name you love. I'm going to name you celebration of your oneness, yet how, how magnificently you are diverse in everything. But we forget who we are. We get numbed out. That true identity that we were created out of, we get numbed out by intergenerational legacies, loyalties, patterns, and beliefs in otherness. We may have been born into a belief system of otherness, and we all were born into a world that holds a belief system of otherness, but we were created out of oneness. Can I get an amen? amen. We have simply forgotten we have created the fog, we have created the veil of illusion that creates this sense of separation, but make no mistake, the truth of who you are has never disconnected from you. We might feel lost, but it hasn't lost us. It is nearer than your hands and feet, it is closer than your breath. It is what and who we are, but we forget. We forget. Not too long after we are born, actually. There's a story about this little boy whose parents, his mom had just had a baby, and they brought the newborn home. And this little boy was like begging his parents. He was relentless. Please let me spend a couple of minutes alone with my new baby brother. And they finally agreed to do this, and they're like, we're going to stand right outside the nursery and see what's up. And what they heard him say to his little infant brother was, will you please tell me who I am because I'm starting to forget. When did you start to forget, beloved? I remember when I started to forget when I was five years old, my first day of kindergarten was the first time it dawned on me that I might not be safe. I forgot my innocence. I forgot my freedom. I forgot my safety. And so I forgot my worthiness. I forgot my value. I forgot my enoughness, which in the mind of God, in the truth of who you are, those things don't exist. God knows you as it created you in its image and likeness. But we've, we've made up a story, not intentionally, not intentionally. We've made up a story and we've made up a false sense of identity. And this false sense of identity that we carry unconsciously 
yet which drives our consciousness. This unconscious belief system, this unconscious way of being drives our conscious decisions without our conscious permission. And so I realized that I was walking around for a lot of years with those illusions of unworthiness and shame and not enoughness. And I kept pushing and pushing and trying and trying to live a fulfilled life, trying to override the program that had been deeply ingrained in my unconscious mind. And no matter how much I colored it up, toned it up, or dressed it up, it would sabotage me every time. How many of you understand that? What does it look like, really? What does the illusion of separation, of being away from your authentic self, the highest version of you, your God self, what does it look like? It looks like saying yes when you mean no. It looks like not speaking up when there's a need to speak up. It looks like having unhealthy boundaries. It looks like a chronic feeling of anxiety and not being able to feel safe in your own body. How many of you have experienced that before? When there wasn't even a reason to. It's called generalized anxiety. It shows up as saying yes to something that you know in your soul because your gut does not lie. You know in your soul is not what you really want. But the illusion of unworthiness will lie to you and tell you this is the best I can get. The illusion of unworthiness and feelings of not being good enough and being disconnected from your authentic self doesn't allow you to set goals because it keeps us scattered and in anxiety. How many of you have experienced that before? And I remember when I was in some negotiations with a client many years ago, a potential client, and the conversation started off pretty well. But as the conversation went on and I started negotiating with my truth, I felt my energy just go from here to like, bam, to there. And I was like, What's the matter? Like, what's going on here? And all my stuff just kind of happens right here. And I just touched myself right there, and I said, what's the matter, boo? I call myself boo. I call myself sweetheart. I call myself beloved. What's the matter, beloved? And she said to me, I'm afraid to ask for what I want. I'm terrified to ask for what I want, because if I ask for what I want, I might not get anything. I was like, whoa, I hit a bottom. Just like I hit a bottom 37 years ago off of crack cocaine. I hit a bottom in many years of recovery where I was like, I cannot make decisions from this place anymore. I cannot live from this place anymore of, of unworthiness and shame. But I knew that while I didn't want to make decisions from that place anymore, and here's where the first step of recovery comes from, where it says, I admit that I am powerless and my life has become unmanageable. I knew that no matter how much I didn't want to make decisions from that place, that that was all I knew how to do. That there had to be a transformation that had to happen that would allow me to make decisions from my authentic self, from my wholeness, from my value. But I had to first admit that the me that was in the problem was not the me that could fix it. The me that was in the problem was not the me that could heal it. I had to come to believe that there was a power greater than myself that was in myself, within myself, that is the truth of myself, that could do for me, through me, as me, what I couldn't do for myself. Can I get an amen? amen. So I said, all right, time to go to work. So I went within into my sacred closet, and I did the soul recovery work that I'm talking to you about today. I did that soul, deep soul recovery work. And when I came out of my sacred closet, I decided with this potential client to leave the deal on the table. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, sometimes I gotta leave the deal on the table. Sometimes I gotta walk away. Because here's the thing. When you walk away, 
I knew that when I walked away, when you walk away in the name of your self-value, when you walk away in the name of truth, when you walk away in the name of your true identity, you know what's going to happen? That, that void where there seems like there's a void, where there seems like something's missing, that the universe in its inexhaustible, omnipotent good will fill that void with the divine something that is beyond your wildest imagination. But you got to get out of the way. You got to heal Boo. You got to remind Boo of who he or she is so that you can raise that frequency from here to your wholeness. And it is from that place that every answer, every solution, everything is operating at that frequency. You don't have to make it happen, beloved. You just have to make it welcome. So what is it costing you to make decisions or be in indecision or to be in procrastination from that place of I'm not enough, I'm not ready, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy? What is it costing you? I think the cost is too high. And when I have people come and sit in front of me and we unpack what's going on with them, with their financial crisis, with their relationship crisis, with their addiction issues, whatever that may be, we always find out it's the same stuff. I'm afraid. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel good enough. Why? Because I have disconnected from who I am. Because when I am connected to who I am, when you are connected to who you are, guess what? The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. It's yours by the activity of your consciousness. And I remember the first time I caught a glimpse of my authentic self, the self that was in existence before that little girl beat me up in kindergarten, the self that was in existence before they bullied me on the bus every single day, the self that was in existence before my mom abused me. I, it was like I caught a glimpse of her. She had been covered up in all this mud, in all this story, in all this false perception. How many of you can relate to that? She's still there. He's still there. He's just, he's just hiding. He's just, he's just there. He's your, he or she is your soul where no hurt nor harm has come nigh your dwelling place, just waiting for you to remember, waiting for you to remember. And so it happened for me 37 years ago on November 1st as I sat in the back of a taxi demanding that he take me to the drug dealer's house. And he looked at me and he said, young lady, please don't kill yourself today. And that wasn't news to me. I'd heard that a thousand times, including from my seven-year-old daughter at the time who had been removed from my care because I was on drugs. So I'd heard that a thousand times. But something happened in that moment. My soul said, oh, not today, sister. You see, your soul will chase you down. Your good will chase you down. Your true identity will chase you down. That's what's happening in the world right now where it looks like it's falling apart, but it's really coming together. Because the truth of our beingness is chasing our down, saying, oh, no, 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 there's no more of this racism stuff. There's no more of this racial bias stuff. It's like, you know, we're going to fall apart until we remember to come together. Can I get an amen? amen? So on this particular day, when this taxi looked me in my eyes, something magical happened. Or maybe it wasn't magical, maybe it was just reality happened. And the veil parted. The fog lifted. And I didn't know fear. I didn't know unworthiness. I couldn't remember what had happened to me. I only knew bliss and love and ecstasy. And God said, this is who you are. This is who you are. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to deserve it. You don't have to effort for it. You don't have to work for it. It is just who you are. And that was the beginning of my recovery, rediscovery, and reawakening journey. And it's been a long journey. 
It's been a long journey as I looked at my emotional addictions, as I'm inviting you to look at the emotional addictions that are keeping you stuck and separated and disconnected from your identity. Some of you might be in here today saying, oh God, she's talking about addiction. She's talking about the 12 steps. I wish, I wish my son was here. I wish my brother was here. I wish my husband was here. And I just like to say, no, boo, I'm talking about you. So let's look at what addiction is. Addiction is when we are so attached to a belief system, a thought pattern, or a behavioral pattern, whether it's conscious or unconscious, that we become enslaved or in bondage to it. That no matter how badly we might want to change from the conscious level, that the programming in the unconscious level is the boss. Have you ever experienced that before? But there's a boss that's beyond that boss. And I had to really understand that, that there's only one power and it is omnipotent. So even this wounded inner child, even this programming in the unconscious mind, that when we wake up and realize who we are, it no longer has the power over you. But how do we begin that process? We begin that process of returning to our authentic self in the first step of recovery, whether we call it the first step whether we call it, as Jesus called it, of myself, I can do nothing. As Einstein called it, I cannot heal the problem at the level of the problem. I cannot heal the addiction at the level of the addiction. I cannot heal my health at the level of where my health is. I admit that that part of me, that in the mind of God, is actually an illusion. We want to have compassion for it, but it's actually an illusion, and I admit that I'm powerless over this illusion, and it makes my life unmanageable. I want you to think of something right now that you're trying to control, that you're trying to figure out, that you're trying to fix. I want you to hold your fists like this, like just really, really, really tight. I want you to feel the resistance. I want you to feel how hard that is, and now I want you to repeat after me, and I want you to say, I'm powerless. powerless. And then I want you to say, ah, oh, yay. There's something wonderful about admitting personal egoic powerlessness, which then makes you available to that, to come to believe that this power greater than yourself in the beginning God that created you in its image and likeness that is within you, nearer than your hands and feet, closer than your breath. It's not outside of you. It's not even better than you. It is you. Can restore you to your true identity. But what, what, what must we do? First step, admit that we are powerless. Second step, we came to believe, we're willing to believe that this power can restore me to my true identity. Because what? In the third step, I've made a decision to turn my will. Most people say where there's a will, there's a... No, where there's a will, there's a wall. Right? I've made a decision to turn my wall my will over to the care of God, love, harmony, order, peace, this presence and power that's got my back. I want you to say, God's got my back. Got my back. Life is for me. Is for me. Nothing's against me. And I like to share with people, if the God of your understanding isn't working for you, if you're not feeling peace, if you're not feeling harmony, if you're not feeling love, if you're not feeling abundance, then it's time to get a new God or it's time to get a new understanding. No judgment. Our work is about self-compassion, that we've all been through a lot. Wouldn't you say? We've all been through a lot. And it's not easy to give up those old habits. It's not easy to give up those emotions. It's not easy to give up those patterns when the egoic mind, the part of us that has forgotten that we're one with God, is trying so desperately to keep you safe in what's familiar. It's not easy. But in God, in oneness, in returning home, in spiritual practice, in doing the work, in parting the veil, in allowing God to part the veil, all things are possible. You are the power 
The real you is not powerless. The real you is all power. And when we reconnect in conscious contact, we pray only for knowledge of God's will, the infinite's will, that is your highest will, that is the highest version of yourself, and the power to carry that out. And when we awaken to that, we awaken just like Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz. And we realized we'd never left at all. We'd always been home. We were just having a dream. I invite you this week to look at where you've disconnected from home. There's nothing out there in the world that's going to make you better. We're not waiting on the world to change to make us feel safe. Because guess what? We are the world. We are, the, we are individuals that, and we participate collectively in the world. We are the world. So we are saying yes to transformation. We are saying yes to recovery, rediscovery, and reawakening to who we are. We are divine. We are soaring. We are enough. We are worthy. We are deserving. We are love. We are prosperous. We are good. We are good and very good. Just point to yourself and say, I'm good and very good. And so it is. Amen.